It was December 20th, 1980 in Langby, Minnesota. Jean Hilliard was the average 19-year-old woman driving home to her parents' house. It was Christmas time, time for fun, time for hanging out and catching up. Jean had just spent the evening with some friends and her boyfriend, dancing and partying. Even though she wasn't of legal drinking age, they had gotten a hold of some alcohol as well. It was Christmas after all, what's the big deal? About midnight, Jean pushed her way back out into the intense 20 below weather and piled into her father's white Ford LTD. She fired it up and headed home. The roads were slick. It was dark and she was tired. Her father's car was a rear wheel drive and didn't have anti-lock brakes, so she needed to be extra careful this night. Jean decided to take a shortcut through a gravel covered back road, but instead of the gravel helping, it was frozen over and she lost control of the car. She tried to regain control, but it all happened so fast. Before she knew it, Jean slid off the edge of the road and into a ditch. She spent a few minutes spinning the wheels, trying to get out, but it wasn't going anywhere. She couldn't spend the night in the car. She would for sure freeze to death. A friend of hers, Wally Nelson, a cattle rancher and butcher, lived nearby. He was her boyfriend's best friend, so they knew each other fairly well. She wasn't exactly sure how far he was, but she was on his road. She could surely find it, right? She decided to make her way to his house for help. The instant she opened the car door, the murderous cold hit her. She had a basic coat and some mittens, but wasn't prepared at all for a walk further than the short distance between her vehicle and her friend's house. The cold immediately began to bite through her cowboy boots. She crunched through the snow, heading over the rolling hills and grew more and more frustrated. As each time she reached the top of a hill, she was sure her friend's house would be in sight, but she would find herself looking at yet another hill. At this point, she had no choice but to keep moving forward. Her body temperature dropped lower and lower. Her coat could only keep out that level of cold for so long. Two miles later, just when it seemed like she would never make it, she saw her friend's house peeking through the surrounding trees. The cold had started to grip her at the same time and before she could take one more step, everything went black. The night passed on and the first rays of dawn hit around 7 a.m. Wally was awake and went outside to check on things only to be taken by complete surprise. Just 15 feet from his porch on the ground was Jean Hilliard. Somehow she had managed to crawl her way through the trees all the way to his front lawn before her body completely gave out. I was so surprised when I saw that little hunk out in the yard, Wally said. There were bubbles coming out of her nose and she was frozen stiffer than a board. He thought for sure she was dead. He called for his girlfriend to come help as he dragged her onto the porch. Jean was frozen solid with her eyes wide open. Wally and his girlfriend tried to put Jean in the cabin of his truck, but she was too stiff and they couldn't get her to fit, so they had to take her in Wally's girlfriend's car. They drove Jean to Faustin Hospital, where she was so cold the thermometers couldn't register her temperature. They couldn't place an IV because her skin was so hard it kept breaking the needles. When they tried to check her eyes for reactions to light, they were frozen solid and didn't register at all. One Christian member of the hospital staff called her local pastor and asked him to start praying for Jean. The pastor then started a prayer chain for Jean's recovery. Despite being frozen on the outside, Jean's heart was still beating and she was breathing very faintly two or three times per minute. Her pulse was only about 12 beats per minute, but she was still alive. The medical staff thought there was very little chance that she could possibly survive. But since her heart was beating and the Christian staff member had hope along with other church members, they decided to attempt to warm Jean up. They wrapped her in an electric blanket and waited to see what would happen. As the minutes went by, her skin slowly softened and her eyes unfroze. Then the rest of her body defrosted. Two hours passed and suddenly, Jean broke into severe convulsions. And just like that, she regained consciousness. To the doctor's amazement and the prayer chain's celebration, truly miraculously, the frostbite began to fade from her arms and legs. 
The first thing she asked for was a glass of water, and then she started to remember what had happened and was afraid that her father would be mad at her for crashing his car. He was not. Three days later, she was able to move her arms and legs again, but the doctors were still convinced they would have to amputate at least one of them. You can't be frozen solid and totally recover. The prayer chain didn't believe this at all, and they kept praying for her. It turned out the prayer chain was right. It took 49 days, but Jean fully recovered and walked out of the hospital with no permanent damage to her body. Her doctor, Dr. George Satter, simply said, I can't explain why she is alive. The churchgoers say they know exactly why she's alive. Some have suggested that the alcohol in her body was the reason why her internal organs didn't freeze and consequently saved her life. What's really surprising about this story is that it isn't the only one out there. As a matter of fact, doctors have said that they would be very cautious about declaring anyone dead until they are warm and dead. In 2016, Justin Smith of Pennsylvania was found on the road after being in sub-zero temperatures for over 12 hours. He was blue and completely frozen solid. He had no pulse and no blood pressure, but he came back to life and survived. In 1999, Anna Bagenholm was underwater under a sheet of ice for almost 40 minutes. She was almost totally frozen solid and was completely flatlined when they pulled her out. It took a year, but she made a complete recovery. In 2001, a year old toddler in Canada named Erica Nordby snuck out of her house at 3 a.m. into the frozen Canadian terrain wearing nothing but a diaper and a t-shirt. When they found her in the morning, she was frozen, face down in the snow. They defrosted her in the hospital and she ended up making a full recovery against all odds. As for Jean Hilliard, she said, it's like I fell asleep and woke up in the hospital. I didn't see the light or anything like that. It was kind of disappointing. So many people talk about that and I didn't get anything. It seemed like her incredible story would change her life. She was called the Miracle Girl from Langby. She was interviewed on the Today Show by Tom Brokaw. Newspapers and magazines wrote her story and asked her for interviews. Because of how incredible her story was, she said she kept waiting for something big to happen. She said she felt like her life had been spared for a bigger purpose, but the burst of fame faded and the interviews dried up. She got married, had some kids, then got divorced, then moved just 200 miles away to Cambridge, Minnesota, where she got a job at Walmart. Aside from her amazing 1980 Christmas miracle, Jean Hilliard's life has pretty much been normal.